Go ahead. Like the Baptists say when they give out water baptism, that their logic is a ceremonial thing. It's not directly related to your justification, but publicly sharing or confessing your faith. When somebody say that, say, show me that in the Bible. Yeah, I think they're mixing that up. Right. And I'll, I'll right. say, show me this why show me issue and John did baptize in the wilderness for the remission of sins. Right. That's, that's not, that was a requirement. Yeah. I mean, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter told, Peter and John told him, water baptism is required for remission of sins. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They make that stuff up, David, because it's not in the Bible. It's the exact opposite. The two verses, he quoted John. I quoted P Peter. Both of those guys say it is a requirement. What about for the remission of sins? Uh, I mean, what, what the point that I, that I wanted to make is that <laughs> this, this, we just went over this publicly confessing mm -hmm. issue, right? And I think they're taking that into water baptism and saying that this water baptism is a ceremonial thing and this is confessing their faith. It's a public confession. Oh, their public confession of their that, because yeah, that, right. that's so. Here's here what here's be my question to one of them Baptist why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who told you to do that? God didn't tell you to do that. See, you got to put people on the spot. But God didn't know we had to do it. Oh, yeah, God, <laughs> God didn't know. But see, ask people. Say, you want them to think, why are you doing that? Why are y'all saying that? It's not in the Bible. Who told you to do that? It's like Adam and Eve. Who told you you were naked? Go ahead. The pastor in Texas died doing it, so why would God allow him to die? Because he got electrocuted. With a... Oh, really? Some yeah. goofball really? got yeah, got in the water with a microphone oh, <laughs> and got electrocuted. Yeah, he died. So I'm like, sorry to laugh. Because well, it's stupid, Nola. Wow. <laughs> he got electrocuted. He went in with the microphone. It was the, the powerful electric charge, and he got he got electrocuted. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, so he was like, "I'm gonna start water baptizing." And he walked in and died. same same a, a pastor. <laughs> A, a, a pastor, I love Noah's laugh. I missed it. A pastor and his son both died handling serpents. <laughs> I, like, I love I missed that laugh. I at the conference where he was like, man, right to vision will save your life. It will <laughs> save your life. It will save your life. Who was that? Ron said that. But, but think about the power of a father. This dude watched his father die and not get. <laughs> no, like, I missed that laugh. Hey, man. Did the same thing. And die. And die. Why, why, why were they handling <laughs> Mark 16. Go to Mark chapter 16. They were going to show their faith. Mark 16. I missed your laugh, girl. Uh, no, I could listen I to that all day. Be no, 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 no. It's funny. It's because it's, that's craziness. Look at Mark chapter 16. Uh, verse number 15 through 18. She's cracking up. You never heard that, Noah? The guy, he got electrocuted while he was in the, in the, in the, in the dunk tank, the, the water tank, baptism tank. No, I'm actually laughing about the ones with the snakes. The oh, yeah. Because it had happened before. It, it happened to his father. And they, and they could hear, I mean. <laughs> Think about this. There is a church that had two pastors, a father and a son, and both of their pastors died from serpent poison, venom. <laughs> Proving that scripture. Yeah. They were dancing around with it. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Noah so much that laugh. That oh laugh. my, oh, oh my. It is so contagious. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. It, I, I'm just gonna listen to this back. And, okay, here we go. <laughs> Noah, you gotta come on. Come on to. to, to okay, here we go. Mark 16:15, and he said unto them. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What gospel is that, David and Dane? That's right. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Notice that's not just an outward sign of inward. That means you need to be baptized. You're saved. But he that believeth not, obviously, if you don't believe, you're going to be damned. Verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. That's why you see people pretending like they, you know, casting out devils out of people. In, in my name, they shall speak with new tongues. That's, you hear that phenomenon, alhamdulillah, all that stuff. Verse 18, this is it, Daniel. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Um, they shall take up serpents. That's where they got it from. That's where they got it from. So they did. Yeah. 
they really died. They're out in the wilderness, so they're exactly. Right. So in case one happens to. I, I I would ask this Chung guy, what does he think about laying on the hands of sick people and stuff like that? Does he do that? Because James he says that there's no supernatural healing power in that. Right now. Why though? Because James, he believes the book of James, right? Mm -hmm. Here, let me show you. Go to James chapter five. Last, yeah, last go, go to James chapter five. Laying hands on people. Because you can't pick, you can't pick and choose. If you're gonna pick some of James, you gotta pick oh, all of James. Still, he, but he still says that when somebody's sick, it's right for the elders to go and pray for them. All right, but let's see what that verse said. I take him to this verse because the verse promises two things. Mm -hmm. The man will get healed and he will have his sins forgiven. Look at James chapter 5. So don't let him just kind of him and haw around it. Kind of take a little bit, not all of it. I want to show you something. Look at James chapter 5, verse 14. Let me know when you got it. So you said he does believe that, you know what's weird? He, he believes that supernatural physical healing has passed away but he at the same time he believes that if somebody is sick that the elder should make a trip over to their home anointed with oil and pray over them right what's so what do they do what's the purpose what's what's the sense? What is it? i would ask them that but look at this verse look at this verse show them this verse mm -hmm. verse number 14 is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. not might save him shall. shall save keep reading and the Lord shall raise him up so whatever infirmity he has the Lord's going to heal him and if he hath committed sins they shall be forgiven him like all that's together in that one thing you know he, he also admits he also admits it first, and what, 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 what is it? when the perfect thing comes, the what, the what is partly prophesied, and all that. Is, that well, yeah. we know that has to do with the first doctrine first. of the mystery, First yeah, Corinthians thirteen. Yeah. Uh -huh. and he also, so, what would he do with that passage right there? Is, is that in effect today or not, as far as he's concerned? As far as he's concerned, he will say it is. It, is, it has effect on us too. That, that, that's it, that, that is, that is James, in effect today. James has written, I know he does. So, why doesn't that happen though? What happens if they do that? They go and they pray over somebody and they die. That happened to Krista's grandpa. Her pastor uncle, her father's brother. Her grandpa, Paul, is out there sick with cancer. All the elders of his church went to his father's house. This is her uncle. Anointed him, prayed over him. He died of cancer. God didn't heal him like that. This dude was a pastor. That's his father. And all his elders went there, did exactly that verse. They claimed that verse. They'll say he didn't have enough faith. <laughs> or Problem with that is, that has nothing to do. That, that verse says if those guys do that and they pray for him. By the way, the man born of four, remember Jesus was healing and teaching. They opened up the roof and let the people down. It says when he saw their faith, not the man's faith, their faith. The blind man he healed one day didn't even know who he was. They said, who did this? He goes, I don't know. The next day, Jesus came and says, hey, do you believe on the Son of Man? He goes, who is he? Tell me who he is. He said, he that healed you yesterday. That man got a healing and didn't even know who Jesus was. That whole, your faith is not, if you got the faith of a tiny little mustard seed, Christ said, you move mountain. That's the power of faith. When people tell you that you don't get your healing because your faith is not strong enough, they're, they're, they're not taking into account this verse and other verses in Scripture. they put putting it on you because they see it's not working like the Scriptures say. Yeah. Oh, and this, this reminded me of one question that I had. Uh, I read through the four gospel, mm -hmm. and whenever, whenever he, Jesus healed uh, the sickness, he would use the word forgiveness. That, that was, Sins are correct. Sins are forgiven. Right. So why does he use the word forgiven? Cause, Cause he's God, and he take he's taken away those particular sins from that point up. They're what gone. What do they have to get that kind of disease? Like well, no, they didn't get the disease from. Cause they would ask him, "Who sinned, Lord? This man or his parents?" He goes, "Neither. Sin is just part of is just part of our human nature." Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't send a particular sin to get that disease or sickness. You could, it's you just could, part you of could the make curse. the argument in John five though with the at the pool of Bethesda when he heals that guy, and he says and he finds in the temple later on. He says sin. No oh yeah, yeah, right. Plus the worst thing happened. To the we right? talked about that. You made a good yeah. point. We that exactly because they were going there to be for the healing and not looking to the God of the Messiah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it is just by chance from uh, because of because everybody has sin nature and then mm -hmm. that that kind of disease happened to some people. But not to everybody. Yeah, well, it's mostly, chance. mostly it's Certain it's just it it is the effects of the curse. Mm -hmm. The curse is on on the creation is just ran. It, yeah. So what, what you you got the Lord saying like, Matt right, but he got them saying when they said who this man was born blind, Lord, who sinned, him or his parents? The Lord says in this case, neither. no, neither. Yeah. That's not why he's blind. That's the effect of the curse. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna heal him. So the point <laughs> is, you would forgive that specific. Sin in him. Well, I have to see. Does it say sins or sin? What does it say? Does it say sin or sins? Well, in the case of the one that you're talking about, it's sins plural. Like it, he'll say, he'll say, "Son, thy sins are forgiven," mm -hmm. and they'll say, "Who can forgive sins but God alone?" He goes, "Which is easier, for me to say your sins are forgiven, or to say to that man, stand up and walk, to prove who I am?" He goes, "It's just for them." Take up your bed and walk. This guy was paraplegic. It's sins, plural. Yeah, yeah. sins. Thank you. So, exactly. So, he's just talking about the sins that they've committed up until that point. He forgave them all. All the sins that they're going to commit. No, no, no. Up until that point. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Because he'll tell them, go and sin no more. He told the lady that. The adult caught in the midst of adultery. He says to the woman, woman, where are thy accusers? That's the he who is without sin cast the first stone. They were going to stone her. And the Lord says, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. He said, so he didn't say don't stone her. He said, let the joker who has no sin be the one to throw the first one. But my question was, yeah. even though he was healed from that, that disease, he's going to be sinning throughout the course of his life. And then he will be doing all the works that he needs to do to remit that sin, right? Right. Yeah, right. the short account system. Yeah. Still a short account system. And, and and you have to understand all these accounts of these particular miracles are types and shadows of how God deals with the nation of Israel. Remember, I told you when you read about a miracle or something he did or said, think that's how he deals with Israel. So even when he told that woman, go and sin no more, it's him talking to Israel. That's how he's going to deal with them in the kingdom. So it's, it's types and shadows of his plan and purpose with Israel. That's why the Lord did... A hundred times as many things as this, I mean, hundreds of times many things that's recorded. These are recorded, John says, so that Israel can see God's dealings with them. So they're types of the nation of Israel. All the women, all the men. He'll say a certain man, type of the nation of Israel, that type of stuff. They're types of Israel. So he forgave the sins up to the point of that, David. But yes, he's going to sin again. But the point is, now they're more cognizant of their sin and, and their need for Messiah. That's the biggest thing. They need him. Because he's the one who just healed them and forgave them. Yeah. Well, as far as I understand, I don't know if I'm understanding correctly, but the sin nature, the sin that's coming from our sin nature, it's used with a, with a singular form, isn't it? Sin. The right. The commit that it's written plural, isn't it? Sins. Right. As far as the belief, so now you, you get, see... You, you, with, with the Gospels, they are not regenerated human beings the way we believers are today. The moment you trust Christ, God eradicates sin, S-I-N nature that you had. It's now in your members. It's in your body. But you have a new nature now, Christ. All of us as believers. God didn't deal with the prophetic believers like that because they didn't have salvation. They didn't have everlasting life salvation at a moment forever. So where sin is in the believer today, if you remember, the, if you're saved today, your sin is in your members, in your body, in this flesh. Paul calls it the body of sins. Our nature, we have a new nature. We don't have Adam's old nature. We are Christ. So you said about sin nature, which are you talking about? Because a believer or a lost person? Because I thought it should be written as thy sin 
are forgiven if the disease came from the sin nature. No, he's not. He, 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 sin they no, he's not saying that disease came from that person's sin. That disease most likely just came because of the curse on creation. Yeah, if it, then if people it get diseases. The curse, then why do they say thy, the, thy sins are forgiven? Because he's kind of equating the sins with the disease. Oh no no no! Don't those are two separate things. No, I mean like um. Because he promised physical healing to Israel as well as spiritual healing. He, he gives them both at the same time. David, look here. When he dealt with the Jew, if they were sick, he took that sickness. He bared it upon himself. But they needed forgiveness of sins too. He did that. He's showing that he as Messiah can forgive sins. That's why they were outraged. Who can forgive sins but God? He's going, because I'm God. I'm forgiving sin. So yeah, don't equate... Don't always equate the sins committed to a particular sickness or disease because many of the diseases that the people have were because of the curse. Imagine a baby born blind, that, for example. What, what did the baby do to, to nothing. nothing? Babies are born with cancer, right? Or two-year-olds get cancer. they innocent before God. Babies are born with diseases, right? Out of the womb. They've done nothing. What, where is that? That comes from the curse on creation. Yeah. So don't always equate that. Sometimes, yes, but the context will let you know, okay? Because the, the man born blind, they said, who sinned, Lord? He goes, he didn't sin, nor his, nor his parents did anything that made him blind. It was just a curse on cre the curse. So he's saying, I, I'm going to take the curse away. It's, by the way, all these it's little the, things. The thing that he does at the same time. Yeah. Because the two things Messiah is supposed to do is heal them physically and heal them spiritually. Mm -hmm. How do you heal somebody physically? Take the sickness away. How do you heal them spiritually? Forgive their sins. So is that why Jesus is making my quick question? She, she does this all the time. I do myself. Let me tell you something. Oh, I can tell how you're asking it. Where you're <laughs> the reason what, we miss out with Krista because she sacrifices mm -hmm. for the parents. She, she has the children. She always adds in like that. That's why I like her in the Q and A's when she can. Because I get to say she she's 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 always done like yeah. that. I she's find a benefit. Out where yeah. I'm confused when she, when she clarifies my question. Mm -hmm.